Pleasure to uh, join you. Um, I'm having trouble hearing. Um, please wave me down if you're not ready for me yet. I'll come there. Uh, so tell me, are you uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can hear me. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me go ahead and share this presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this looks like it's not running very well. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, are you able to see my screen? See the uh, presentation here? Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. Wonderful. Great. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, I was inv invited here for uh, Hot and Jabril and Care to uh, present on uh, airborne building acoustics measurements and uh, our new 2255 sound level meter. Um, Actually, I uh, was hoping that uh, our hands, handheld sound level meters project manager, Michael Whiteman, would be able to uh, present for you. But unfortunately, he is engaged with the Internoise Conference in Glasgow right now. So he asked me to uh, to pick this up and, um, and show you some materials that he has prepared. A little bit about me. I am an application support engineer for HBK uh, since 2017. Uh, it was it was still Brulen Care uh, when I joined. I am based in Southern California in the United States, and my focus is on supporting sound level meters, sound power test, and acoustic material testing uh, in um, reverb chambers and in impedance tubes. Uh, before coming to Brulen Care, I spent about 12 years in noise and vibration, mostly in commercial acoustical consulting uh, based in New York City. All right, a little bit about airborne building acoustics. And I apologize if this uh, gets uh, a little bit basic for some, some of you, but sometimes a primer is useful. When we're doing airborne sound insulation testing between rooms, essentially we are taking a loudspeaker, generating noise in one room, and measuring the noise level in that room and in the next room. The whole point is to identify how much sound that barrier is blocking between rooms. And that measurement has a relatively simple schematic workflow. You do your source level measurements, that is your L1 measurement, so the loudspeaker is in the source room. You measure the noise levels in that room. In the other room, you measure the receiving room. That's your L2 levels. And you're able to measure how much quieter it is in that room. Then with the loudspeaker turned off, you make a background noise measurement. That's so you can prove that the noise levels you were measuring were due to the loudspeaker. And when you're doing uh, normalized measurements that are gonna be compared to, um, to weighted standards or compared to laboratory test data, you'll also do reverberation measurements in the receiver room so that you can correct for the furnishings in the room and the absorption therein. Uh, sound insulation metrics. Uh, the standard uh, ISO Sound, sound reduction metrics are your RW, which is a laboratory test measurement, and your DNTW, which is a field measurement. Uh, 
in both cases, you are uh, calculating a rating based on the difference between the source and receiver measurements. In the laboratory test, you are normalizing that based on the amount of absorption in the test chamber. And in the field, you are normalizing that based on a um, on the reverberation time, normalizing that to one half second. Now, when we are making a measurement, uh, here I have a, uh, a video. Let me uh, pull this up so that I can uh, I can I can share this with you. Let me share that screen. Share my audio and uh, give you a, a demonstration of how a complete sound sound insulation test would run with uh, one of our sound level meters. This room will be our source room and this room will be our receiving room. And at the end of the test, we'll know how well this wall is preventing sound from being transmitted between the two rooms. Here I have our Type 4292L OmniPower sound source. The L stands for lightweight. This one's only eight kilos, but it's just as powerful as heavier sources. There are some lighter sources on the market, but the devil's in the details. Often they can't maintain high levels for more than a few seconds, and they're not well protected from dust, and they're not very robust for use on a real world building site. So let's go set them up. So now it's time to set up our amplifier and our sound level meter. Uh, but first, let's have a look at our backpack here. So this contains everything we need for our survey, except for our sound source and its tripod. It even has straps for the tripod for our sound level meter. There are some interesting details on this backpack. Like I mentioned before, often when we make these measurements, it's on an um, active building site, and the floor can be dusty and, and covered in debris. So one of the nice details here is when I open the backpack, you can see the side with the straps doesn't touch the ground, so my back's not going to get dirty. Here's my HBK 2255 sound level meter. Just like 2245, it's lightweight, grippy. I can easily reach all of the buttons with my thumb while I hold it. And this is our first HBK-branded sound level meter. I also have our new power amplifier, the HBK 2755. This has exactly the same power output as our old 2734, but at 2.2 kilos, it's around about a third of the weight. It also has integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a powerful signal generator. So I'll go and set this up now. OK. So most measurement standards require that we calibrate our sound level meter before and after each series of measurements. So let's do a quick calibration check. Now, just like on 2245, 2255 will automatically recognize the calibrator tone and start a calibration check. As expected, the check is passed. So now I'm ready to set up the sound level meter in the receiving room, and we can start our measurements. Just like the apps for 2245, we can attach photos, videos, and voice and text notes to our projects. This is really useful on building projects because quite often, when we're doing the survey, we could notice things about the room that are going to affect our results. So maybe we'd find a sloppy penetration, or maybe the door seal isn't well installed. Um, there's no defects that I can see right now, but I'll just take a photograph in the corner here to demonstrate the feature. So now this photograph is attached to my measurement project. And um, when I look at this later on on the PC, I'll have a record of what I saw on site. Now that my equipment is in position, I'll close the doors. Now we're ready to start measuring, so I'll start the Building Acoustics Partner app. As you can see, the app has detected my sound level meter on Bluetooth, so I'll just touch that and connect. And I have a project that I made before for HBK Copenhagen. And this project has the geometry of my rooms configured already, and also all of the settings for the measurement standard. 
There are a lot of different standards and a lot of different ways you can measure. So I won't go through all of the settings right now. Um, we'll just jump straight into the measurements. Now, I've set this up as a planned survey. And when we do a planned survey in this app, we can have an order of the different types of measurements. I've used the default order that we have, which is the background measurement first, then the level in the receiving room, followed by the level in the source room, and finally the reverberation time. We choose this as a default order because it lets you see any problems you might have overcoming the background sound as early as possible in the measurement process. So you can see on the app, the measurement assessment is asking me to move the instrument to position one to measure B2 position one. We already have that set up. So I'll hit OK, and now we'll start the measurement. So you can see while I'm measuring, I have a spectrum at the bottom, and at the top I can see the profile for each frequency band. We made this inspired a little bit by old level recorders on paper, so you can see the level drawn across the screen as you go, and this helps you to see if there are any problems with disturbances, um, so you can see visually on the profile what's happening. But we didn't have any problems on this measurement, so I'm going to hit the tick and accept it. So now the measurement guide is asking us to go to L2. We already have the sound level meter in the receiving room, so we're ready to measure L2 right now. So I'll just hit OK, and we'll start this measurement, and this time the loudspeaker will start. So now you can see that the level we're drawing on the screen is much higher than the background level. And I think you can also see that it's a lot more stable because it's just noise from our loudspeaker, which is very stable and not the um, affected so much by the ambient sounds in the space. OK, now that that measurement's finished and I'm happy with it, I'll hit the tick to accept it. And now the guide is telling me to go to L1. And for this, I need to move our sound level meter into the source room. So I'll do that now. So the standard we're using, ISO 16283, allows us to make our measurements in several different ways. Um, you can measure with the sound level meter in your hand or on a tripod. The operator can be inside the room or outside the room like I am now. Um, you can also have fixed measurements or measurements where you sweep through a particular path. Um, there is a reference result, however, if there are any disputes. The reference result is measurements taken with the operator outside of the room, like I'm doing right now. Um, so let's measure L1 now. So we can see on the app that we have a higher level again in the L1 compared to the L2 because, of course, the sound from the loudspeaker no, ling no longer needs to go through that wall to get to the sound level meter. That measurement looks good, so I'll accept it. Now the guide is giving me a choice. I can go back to L2 uh, when I move my source, or I can measure the second source position of L1 again. I'm going to measure L1 source 2 um, so that I don't need to move the sound level meter. Now, according to the standard, the two source positions must not be parallel to any plane of a boundary in the room. So I need to change the height of the loudspeaker. And then I'll also move this a little bit further away from the sidewall. For these measurements, I'll do this as a scanning measurement. So I'm going to take the sound level meter off the tripod, and we're going to attach our microphone extension rod. There are four different scanning paths in the ISO 16283 standard, but most of the paths require that you change your foot position while you're measuring. There is one path, however, the cylindrical path, where you don't have to change your footing, but that requires an extension. So that's why we have this rod. 
when I make the scanning measurement, I'm going to be inside the room with the loudspeaker. So the levels are quite high and dangerous to my hearing. So for this, I'll wear hearing protection. For this measurement, I'll also control the measurement on the sound level meter instead of the, the app. I have the app in a special pocket mode in my pocket. So that's all of my L1 measurements done. So now I need to do one more level measurement in the receiving room. And because of the wall, the levels are safe, so I don't need my hearing protectors. For this measurement, I'll also take the app out of the pocket mode so you can still see what's happening um, on the measurement screen. So now we're finished with all of our level measurements, and we just have one type of measurement left to do. And that's a reverberation time measurement, which we're going to do in the receiving room. The reason we do this measurement is that normally when we're doing a sound insulation test, this room is not furnished and it doesn't have any carpet. And that means that the acoustical absorption in this room is much lower than it ordinarily would be when it's occupied. And that will mean that the levels that we measure in here are higher than people who are using this room will experience. So we make a reverberation time measurement, and then we can correct our results to simulate what this would be like with typical furnishing. So for the reverberation time measurements, there are two different methods that we can use. One is, to use interrupted noise from our loudspeaker. Um, an advantage of this is it doesn't require any additional equipment, but it is a little bit slow. So what we're gonna do this time is make a measurement with an impulsive noise source. Um, this can be something like a balloon that you blow up and burst. Uh, there's also some clapper boards, but what we're gonna use is a starter pistol. Um, this is the most popular way of doing it. Um, except for that it can have some problems with permitting in some countries, but it's definitely the fastest way. So again, for this measurement, this is you know, potentially dangerous for my hearing, so I'll put my hearing protectors on. I'll leave the app open here so you can see the RT measurement as I make it, and I'll go and do a single decay. If we were doing this according to the standards, we'd normally do a minimum of six decays, but since this is a demo, we'll just stick with the one. So now let's have a little look at what we can see on the app screen. So at the bottom, we can see our reverberation time spectrum. So this is the decay time in each third octave band. And then above, we can see the backward integrated decay for that particular band. If in any band, I could see that the algorithm hasn't correctly um, calculated the decay, I can actually adjust the slope. 
by dragging these lines here. But this measurement looks pretty good. So I'll undo my edit and I'll accept this measurement. So now we've done all of the measurements we need for this test, so we can go to the result. So there we have it, we have our result, uh, DNTW of 37. All right, uh, so there is a uh, pretty typical airborne sound insulation test. That test there is pretty much uh, comparable for what you would do for any ISO 140 type of airborne test. Um, you know, uh, good for frequencies down to 100 hertz. And we can uh, see that on this example graph from a uh, from an RW laboratory test report, we can see that our rating curve is rating for frequencies between 100 hertz and 3150 hertz. That is the standard RW or DNTW curve. Uh, but new uh, new metrics from the uh, ISO uh, uh, 16283 give us additional methodology to measure down to 50 hertz. And I will show you a demonstration of that here.
Okay. Um, and once a measurement is completed, let me share my screen. These measurements can be uh, imported into our PC software. And all the data from the meter will come off directly onto the uh, onto the PC, including your all of your individual measurements, our individual levels, our reverberation time spectra, and our results. Our results with all of our individual low frequency uh, ratings, which can be generated directly into a uh, test report. Um, like to uh, thank you for uh, for your attention, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Any questions? Hello, Thomas. Yes, hello. Hello. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I, it's very hard to hear. Now we starting? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, uh, while you are measuring the DHTW, but uh, whether you are measuring T20 or uh, RT20 or RT30? So, so are, are, I'm sorry, are you asking about the difference between the DNTW and the RW? Asking you whether you are taking the time or RT20 or RT30. Ah, um, I um, I am not uh, in, um, intimately familiar with the uh, with the ISO standards as so much as I am with the uh, ASTM standards. Um, but I believe that the ASTM standard um, per, um, defers to the uh, the RT20. Uh, First and foremost, but uh, the software, I believe, gives you the option to choose between. Uh, so yes, this, the uh, the meter is able to calculate both the T20 and the T30, and we'll give you the option as needed. Right. There is my uh, my instrument also, but what do you recommend? Whether we should use T20 or RT30? Um, in my personal experience, the uh, the T20 is uh, gives you the most uh, reliable um, uh, utility uh, in in the field. Is there any but scientific the, basis for that? Um, well, if we take a let's take a quick look at some of these reverberation times. So, if we look at the um, well, I mean, it would it would largely depend on the uh, on the level of decay that that you are capturing, um, I would I would say that the odds of uh, I I have seen very few situations where the T twenty was not usable, but the T thirty was. Um, usually the the issue is more that the um, there there is not enough signal to noise ratio to capture a complete T thirty, and the T twenty is more reliable. Um, in this case, however, I think that using the uh, reverse decay and being able to manually curve fit after the fact is going to give you a um, an excellent tool to um, to apply corrections if there are any issues with the T20 that you are uh, are calculated automatically. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly. Is there any other question? Oh. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. K, for your presentation. And our next talk is by Mr. Gautam Suri, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so our next talk is by Mr. Gautam Suri, sir. So we would like to uh, request Mr. Gautam Suri, sir, to enlighten us with his words of wisdom. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, 
Solomon, <coughs> you hear and you don't know where it's coming from, why it's happening, <coughs> what is affecting it, and how to control it. And this is, which basically is a physics oriented topic, is <coughs> much more complex. So as you get into design for physics, you have physics, you have mechanical engineering, you have metallurgy, you have fluid mechanics. We have behavior of metals, behavior of materials, and if the knowledge of that is not complete, the application and solution will be very, very true. Packy, if we keep, and the mayor, you may not get. And as a professional, it is the duty of everybody to make sure that whatever you do is the right thing, and whoever the customer ranks and you who is spending the money, gets the solution is correct. Because of this dearth of good professionals, there, there are lots of companies in the country who are making very good products. Some of them are international companies, some of them are companies. We've got excellent products for different applications. There's no panacea for anything. But I find that these products get sold more driven by market share than by end use. And it's, 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 I feel the owner falls on the manufacturer. To not only sell their products, but to also be guidance on the correct way. If the usage is not proper, the product will fail. When we started off uh, at, at consultant practice in Kerubi, there were only there were periods of Havaga, Munavu, and Wood Havaga. Heraclid, Munavu, and Pilkington Havaga. Three materials were available. The most people don't understand the concept and difference between absorption and absorption. They're totally confused. Because they think of insulation as thermal insulation. There's no such thermal insulation. So I remember in the 70s, we were doing a job, and the owner of this company who made mineral wool came to me to have a specific problem in the office. Should I add 10 inches of mineral wool to the wall? I laughed at him. I said, Do you know what your product does? <laughs> You're manufacturing it. You said, Do you know what it does? It's like but the same situation is just today. We have this, uh, there are new products here, but now there's one thing is this uh, gym mask membrane, which is come out, which is used internationally, which is there, which is for a specific purpose. You add weight and dampening to a thin skin. Membrane used for sound insulation, isolation. I've seen people using it. The other day I came across somebody who said, oh, there is a 9 inch visual in the room. It only gives 32 degree really insulation. So that's first expertise. He's coming out. He doesn't even know that this wall, 9 inch visual doesn't give 32 degree really insulation. It gives nothing. When I'm adding this membrane there, it will add, give me another 5 degree. How will a lymph membrane help a 9 inch visual? It won't. These are the these things <clears throat> alarm me and shock me to see what is happening. This is not correct. But on the other hand, that lip membrane manufacturer, they know the application, they should guide them to do so. This is not the right thing to do it. So what I'm trying to say is the owner fell on the on the expert company to make sure the products are used correctly. There's one something I know and I think Mr. Mitchell is not here, I know to he start off. We use five of both in a small way. They've grown over the years. They make some very innovative products. And I think they do also some consulting services too. So the right application of the product. Otherwise, customers will buy the product, use it for some, or some his consultant or architect will use it for something which is just its own going. And what gets the bad name? The product. And the whole industry. So this is very important. Forcing right people onto the committee is very, very necessary. And if that is not done, we will not get good progressive standardization activities. The danger of forcing private industry on the standards committee is that it should not be a company or product agenda. 
it has to be generic for the good of the subject, the topic, the application, which helps everybody. It cannot be tailored to because it will easily. What happens is, unfortunately, or fortunately, you see the standards are not managed. We are guiding. Even when we say national building code is not mandatory, it is guiding. The only thing lo local body enforces is structure and fire. They don't look at light, they don't look at ventilation, and they certainly don't look at it. So it's guiding. It's, it's an educative document for the designer, the architect, the user, make sure that he does need the right practice. Of course, this is more a code of practice rather than a code of essential code of design. Unlike the ISA 75 or ISA general, which is a structural design code, which has to be followed by rules. In this case, there is no code. So the usage of the code is discretionary. Therefore, what goes into it, a wrong line or a wrong wording, right from there, can be totally distorted in the way. So the acoustics has some strange looking as I've come across and I sometimes lost myself to what is happening. You know, Sound barriers, sir. I mean, first, we'll be in an acoustic and understand sound barriers. You know, there is a straightforward relationship between the height of the sound barrier, the distance from the source, the height above the source, and the distance from the receiver and the height above or below. This is straight equation because it works by the fraction of sound. Two years ago, there was an article in the paper about some report with a neighbor, neighbor that in a green body. So, this great solution was fine, and we put a five meter high wall, three to five hundred meters away from the runway, and the residential area is another five hundred meters away from the wall that side, to just an So, actually, want to write to the paper, so it can suddenly show me this, what are these wondrous calculations that will be achieving this reduction with a five meter wall where the because the engine is two meters above the ground, how is that? How can you reduce? But green body requirement have to be met. It's done. But there is something missing expression in this part. So I'm thinking, what I'm trying to say is it hurts. How can we let things like this happen? But it happens. So it, is, it is not correct because, you know, at least in the scientific community, I want India to go in the right direction. We do wonderful things today. We should go in the right direction rather than you know, we're talking about measurements. Measurements are, I mean, in my time, they very simple sound revenue. Then you got off the and off. Then you got one third of the time. But the analysis has to be done by the eyes and by thinking. RT measurements have to be done. You have to analyze what is causing what. Measurements can give you an answer, report. But what is the cause of the problem? How do I solve the problem? That a measurement BMK cannot do. A real time analyzer cannot do. Unless you understand how you can read those measurements or solve them. And to even the digital design, <clears throat> again, talking about one person experience, you know, we, in my company, we, uh, in my family, we built the Yeah, in that room, structure and region. This is the contract, but as a part of the contract, there was a special looping system design, seven layer system, where the, there were two requirements. Dominantization and sound reduction. <coughs> design was not given, it's a design build. And you had to get it tested from an independent laboratory, not in India. You, you build for a job, you go in, get the order at your risk. Dominantization is easy to calculate. <coughs> Luckily, it's not measurable. Thermal insulation is by theory. Numbers, K value, R value, K 
This is the theoretical thermal energy. But you can't measure it. Sound reduction in index, on the other hand, is difficult to calculate but easy to measure. Now, as the owner of the company, I designed the system for But we have to give a uh, sound reduction in RW of 52 percent for a lightweight group. And it, we took the job, we supplied them, they started doing the work, it was sent to testing to Singapore. Results came halfway through the job, and we passed the test. As the owner, I mean, it was a 300 crore job. I put my company's money on the list, reputation on the list, my reputation on the list, and took that order because I was sure that I knew what I was doing. And I cannot, I cannot fiddle the results with enough. I can't buy the results. With that is the <laughs> level of professional competence and confidence in the way that you're doing this. And I would like all the youngsters to learn from this. We all, if we get into debt more than just the surface of the matter, we will be able to do the job greater. My whole life has been experience of learning. I have never done a job. I was, I was in IIT, I started working my dad. How did I get into manufacturing? Because one contract we got, maybe we have to do engineering work. I had to design a house. The, the partition at Delhi, in, in the Valley International, we specified a 155 meter wide by 40 meter high partition, flexible curtain, which had to meet a 40 GB sound insulation between two halves of the city. Now, how do you design a curtain for 40 GB? Curtain is a curtain. I, I got that job from the contractor. He designed it for us. So we research. We found some companies in Germany were doing something. We went and met them. But they were doing small genius. And when we heard the size, 155 meters long, 40 meters high, each curtain would have weighed 40 to 50 tons. And it had to be rolled up. Yeah. And it rolled up. It will make the one before. Yeah. yeah, it can't go yeah. this way. It can, yeah. because it has set. Went to Germany, found, and I understood the technology. Then I took the challenge. I went to the bank to call it new assets. We scaled up. We know that we scaled it up. So we designed the drive. Found the right lid membranes for plugging in. Bought the drive system, sat down, and got it built on. And the factory was built on a platform. The curtain has to stick. 155 meter long. All done with innovative engineering in house, no collaboration. I was a project manager and we designed it. And you didn't know where to work because it was built at 35 meter height, just in a old fashion. For Asia, one week before Asia, we finished it. When we finished it, we had to see if it work. So we moved the working platform. I was standing in my fingers crossed and praying to God to drop shit, and it worked. Good, sensible engineering. And correct application. Now, this is where I learned that how my engineering can work. And that's when I decided to go into business. I took consulting to get satisfaction, but business is where the money is. So, it's not money only. The point is, I have never used my profession to promote my business. All right. Business is a professional sector. I did not get into a business which had any need to my coach. I don't want to use my contact to promote my business. So I said, okay. That's also an ethical decision. This is how you learn, you take challenges. Today, the important part is all the instrumentation and gadget. You know, information set to you, the overdose information, the mind stops thinking of what it is to do with it. I find people don't apply their mind. They will get divorced, they will just pretend with them what? How do you solve the problem? So please, uh, I'm, I'm very sure we have very really bright people. We have good companies. We have a lot of international companies here today who have got good products. And my request to all of them is that you have 
access to wealth of expertise internationally. Please use it to promote your product and improve the application knowledge and industry. Don't only sell your product, sell the application knowledge. One last example, beside young Tony, Jibbo. He used to work with plaster pack. Then, Jibbo came to India. India is a collaboration with the fashion. Had it been done the normal way, it never had We developed systems, developed training guides, developed manuals, and people that came there actually to send them to training centers. Today, if you call anybody for a system board ceiling or wall panel work, you work professionally like anybody abroad. You call anybody for anything, anything else, they work like Indian and Ali. So when a company puts his mind to it, they can excellent product for like a partition. That's the work. I mean, if you change the, if the new kind of construction, you cannot work without like it. But if you have to work with commercial plywood, you will get a company job. But this sort of thing, it will work because they have excellent range of accessories, fixing techniques, trained work. This is most important in India. The biggest challenge is how to get in work. Something which requires tight work is going to fail. Similarly, as you say, some installation is easy to design. It's very difficult to achieve because even a 3 mm gap, gap below a door can ruin the effectiveness of the wall back end, which people don't realize. It's very important to understand that if the execution is not okay, the devil is in the detail how to get it properly back. So I'm glad to see that NPL started with creating this. At, the, at one time, CSI, uh, CDR Ruti was the only one doing specific tests on building it. And I hope you are doing them too. So CDR was doing a lot of work building the people. Dr. Pantelli was here. There was a lot of action on building people. But I think he was a father of the country. He was the expert in the But then, sometime when the head changes and the Basic interest uh, goes away, focus gets shifted across the But it has to be there. I'm so happy to have seen that you have organized this event like this because it sort of brings up awareness and brings lots more people out. And we must engage with them and bring them onto our standardization. And uh, you could have design guides. You know? in, uh, in, in the US, lot, there are lots of uh, Standards. For example, I talk of steel design. Steel design is a very complex subject. And there are four steps. The right use of the design methodology in construction is a whole different line. That is not there anymore. There's an American Institute of Steel Construction. They have a design code which is followed in America, like our ISO handbook. But then they have a whole series of almost 50 design guides which are published by them. So various aspects of steel building design and use. The correct thing to do, what not to do, which elevates the entire knowledge in the industry. And that effort can only be made by, by an industrial body or a standardization body with support from an industrial body because it needs money, it needs time, and funding. But I'm sure it's possible. And that I think we, if we have those kind of even program, but somebody has to work an end document to make sure it is not biased. So steel is a generic material, so you know it cannot be biased over there. It's therefore, very easy to work with that because nobody has to just the one brand of steel. Or steel or that means as soon as you start working with absorption material, insulation material, then it starts to getting biased. So there are hundred types of materials, some with this pro, some with this pro, some with this one. It's very hard to uh, be subjected, but somebody has to be sit as an arbitrator to make sure that whatever is coming in is uh, unbiased and say the correct thing for usage and applications. <coughs> but our, for us as BIs, and it is my 
my passion for the years has been that we must more to use a good practice in building design, which is the one part of it. There are lots of other functional aspects. Functional aspects are the unfortunately the ones we get ignored the most because they're not important in any building. But the functional requirements of building are most important because that is what the human being is going to experience. There's no good lighting, there's no thermal comfort, there's not good power. Unfortunately, today, more and more buildings have great lighting, great air conditioning, but 90% of restaurants and halls suffer from terrible acoustics. Nobody bothers. It's not considered an important. You go, you go to a restaurant, it's noisy, you don't want to go back again. You can't even listen to your talk to your family. People don't realize that. It's as, as good as having bad air conditioning. I don't want to go there. It's a very essential functional requirement. Both in terms of acoustical comfort within a room and in terms of sound isolation from external noises because our cities are becoming noisy. Lots of external noise. We have a lot more uh, utilities and public transport, which unfortunately gets noisy and noisy. Until the effort, I don't think it's going to be many years before we can all be uh, similarly in a long time. It's not in my lifetime for sure, but it will happen at times. But noise is still remain because the human activity is noisy. So, sound isolation starts in a special role. And in turn, interior acoustics plays an even more important role because without acoustic comfort, we cannot sit in a space for very long, I promise you. If anybody has experienced it, you only experience it in a restaurant, even in an office. If you're sitting in an office where you can hear the person 10 weeks away talking on the phone, it's very annoying. You cannot concentrate besides the fact that you lose your you can hear him, he can hear you. He lost your privacy. And how can you function or concentrate on any thinking that somebody's voice is in your head? This is why they ban mobile phones on planes. So if people start talking on the phone in the plane, you should not be able to travel in the plane. Everybody tends to talk at the top of the voice, as if nobody else around. These are important aspects, isn't it? And I'm sure with your support, uh, we will progress in this situation. My help and contribution is already available while I'm able to. And thank you all for that. Thank you. I would like to share two or three points with the uh, First thing is, uh, just told about Pancholi sir, I think he was our predecessor. Right back, I, I moved to around 70s, I think he was the founder of Acoustic Section at CSR National Civil Liberty. He is my father's friend. Yeah. So, maybe uh, I'll carry on that thing because I joined in 2004 and all the things have been passed on to, uh, from uh, Dr. Pancholi indirectly to me by my uh, senior. One thing is there that it really it, it is very hard burning when we uh, when we hear from our uh, people that uh, they are going abroad for doing uh, a simple, simple testing plus uh, sound insulation or adoption. See, at, in uh, CSR National Physical Laboratory is a national metallurgy institute. By national metallurgy institute means that by the act of the parliament, we have the direct notification that this is the national body which is maintaining the standards for sound and the testing the activities that we are doing uh, and the collection, they are at par with anybody. In fact, we have been, uh, if you just visit the BASM website, the BASM Paris website, we have 34 CMCs enlisted in that website, which itself is a big recognition to any national metal So whatever reports are being issued by us, those reports are at par with any country. No custom, no, nobody can challenge them. Secondly, the thing is that if our Indian countries, they are going abroad, I think somewhere they have to rethink that why you are going there so when our, in India, the facilities are available in the national capital. So we, we think that we should, uh, the manufacturers, particularly in Indian scenario, we should focus to, uh, we are ready to take up the challenges, whatever challenges are there. 
and in fact we have all the certification whatever is required so we can cater to all type of building of office services and we have been doing since i think last few decades so we have com completed many consultancies testing assignments also and in fact all the manufacturers are coming to us i think there is no manufacturer left who is uh, who is not our client so maybe that thing i can assure you that uh, whatever challenges are there we are ready to take up the challenges and it is really a uh, very hard thing to us when we come to know that people are going to singapore or somewhere else. why why not in shayad hamare dimag mein ye rehta hai ki nahi goli chamdi wala hi jo teeth karega wahi so i i that no, no, no. so to go <laughs> let me okay since you raised this topic let me there is a lack of trust yes. in indian people in everything definitely sir no no i'll tell you you go to a hospital doctor gives you a diagnosis you say yeah. why for doctors are also driven today by hospital made or given to them i have an industry where we test three all the time there are only three or four the world being recognized Oh, why? Why? Then you realize this is a problem. You can buy it. So it is not you, your credibility. It is the lack of trust in the entire country to what is happening. So that, and this is something you know. I feel bad also. And why did I? You know, the thing is, I why did we have to go abroad? Because we get hurt in four months. While my money was being spent, I had other than spent of ten thousand. You understand? यहाँ पे आते वो भी एक हफ्ते में बैठ कर देखते हैं कुछ ज़्यादा है, but doesn't happen. All lack of trust. And this is it's not only problems in our industry, but what industry, what work, it's all kinds of things. I mean, you get everything in any profession in India is a is a fault. Same agenda, same one. That's the problem. Model state of our country is wrong. Which I think is fair. There are many many things that are not working. But yeah, you're right. Independent testing is not being recognized. It should be away from this kind of thing. But they are doing it. So, but what happens is that your test report may have huge monetary ramifications. Even the commercial test. Is my dad concerned about the standardization of the government? But I do understand. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Let me share with you two things about it. First thing is like uh, in recent times, just in the last uh, four or five months, I think all the central uh, central list of projects which is testing and they have come here. And in fact, some of the uh, those uh, in between those uh, manufacturers and some companies are coming to us. They are getting their material tested. Doctor, the who contract will come over that company. Yes, that's not an issue. It is one of the contract. Can I share things? 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 Can Indian contractor, Indian architect, they will write a spec which is comfortable to everybody. They have a time on program. They are not going to up, upset the bureaucracy. Sir, my sir, one humble suggestion. Now, we have a central list of testing. A company has come. They were really oh, consultants. They said that 45 FTC should be there. I have told you earlier that 45 is not achievable with your money. But anyhow, this is three or four bar testing. And the last time it came to around 33 or 34 doctors. I think it came to 34. Then he was calling us with us literally. He said, "I am going to Dubai. I 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 am going to Dubai. तो तो नहीं करेंगे तो फिर फॉर्मर तो दे आर बेसिकली दे आर इन टू दिस बिजनेस लैब इन सपोर्ट इन सम इंटरनेशनल रेकग्नाइज लैब और मटेरियल को नो सेल और स्टॉक लैब में लॉट ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरर्स पब्लिश ऑन दिस ये दैट इज वो वो जैसे आप कह रहे हैं कि डेटा शीट में लिखा होगा कॉडिफाई आई हैव सीन स्टोरीज ऑफ यू नो 
Delhi shows for this thing, double glazing. 35 degrees. Improve it from the other one. You are not right, you might be double glazing. It does nothing more than, than the same weight of cumulus. And air cavity does nothing. <laughs> you know that, I know. After air cavity does nothing for sound. If I have two 6 mm, I can use one 12 mm, I'll get the same. That will be a shock to all of you. That's how this is. Because they, they don't want to educate the customer. They're not saying anything wrong, but they're telling you guys. They're not saying, Similarly, uh, I saw one international guy, polycarbonate sheet for dialing. Or you can double glaze polycarbonate. Okay, 108 dB, 35 dB. You figure this is okay. You tell me, is it possible? Sir, can we discuss this? No, no, no. Sir, can we discuss this? Polycarbonate is not in the metro stations. And by you know, we just did those years in our library. And in fight, we find that it was just wasted of money. It is wasted of money. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure. I didn't raise that one. This is a classic example of. Waste of money because of misrepresentation or yeah. They give wrong figures and they can so My only humble submission is that uh, I think we should uh, promote such Bharat. Uh, but Atam Nirbhar Bharat. Atam Nirbhar Bharat. I think you should rely on these. These types of things we are that can be bring credibility on that.
दूसरे कारण का मार्केट का सप्लायर इज वेरी हैप्पी वहां से हमारे सामने आपके जॉब में स्टैंड टू सैंपल रखे गए थे और टी शर्ट है वो हमारे सामने खड़ी थे बट बोर्ड पार्टी टू प्रेजेंट हमारे सामने टेस्ट करिए एंड वन ऑफ दस इज सर्टिफाइड यस ये टेस्ट का जो रिजल्ट ये है और उसके बेस पर और पेमेंट और फिर भारत की कंपनी दर पे गई एंड सुन रहे हो कह रहे हो टेस्ट सो दिस इज इन शॉर्ट दैट टाइम टाइम टू से ही प्रॉब्लम कर रहे हैं और मैं व्हेन आई रिटायर्ड मैन टू ट्रोन इज हर वी बैडली नीड गुड टेस्टिंग हाउस इन देयर नंबर ऑफ देम बट इसे भरोसा नहीं है हमारे सिविलियन में टेस्ट भी भेजते हैं टेस्टिंग के लिए कोई विश्वास नहीं क्या रिजल्ट ही क्या आएगा जो बोलो बोलो मैं क्या था तो टेल मी हाउ विल यू टू बी एंड व्हेन सेड ओके अपना खोल दें टेल मी आपको काम ही है ओनली पीपल कम टू ओनली देख दा हम ये रिजल्ट है ये पर आप ओनली देंगे तो देव नॉट गिव यू पीपल टू सबमिट सो आई एग्री विद मिस्टर स्टोरी टू दिस मैनेजमेंट सो दिस इज व्हाट इज हैपनिंग ऑन एमपी है टू कॉल देम आरडी में रिव्यू चेंबर में People will submit this and follow this. I never trusted any result from NPL or CIA. Continue with it. Two things. Four options. Pass it. Can I tell you what I'm going to do? But they, you know, they the test result breaks the laws of physics. I'm sorry. As an expert, when I see the test result, they break the essential fundamental laws of physics. In my mind, so what is this magic? हमने तो इतने सालों में किसी के नाम नहीं पढ़ा कहीं सीखा नहीं परफॉर्मेंस नहीं देखी कि यहाँ के तो बड़े मेरिटल मटीरियल अनु
the not one person in 38 years business will say interact with people. It's a nice thing to work to build up trust again and again to failures to challenges but once you have done something wrong i'm just, i'm giving an example of where is my trust in nk god person i don't know what it is today i have not seen the support for 20 years i don't know 20 years ago i used to get these figures kabhi ho kar raha tha liya karte kabhi bhi juga wala liya jo liya tha get report so there is no trust So this is the, the credibility of your department hinges on you as the head of the board. The CEO builds the credibility of a company. Definitely, sir. NPS credibility was Dr. Picholi. So we, we, so that is something you have to strive to. We have to maintain. We wish to maintain the. Ah, I'm sure you will. But the only thing that we require is the support from the management. Because see, then today you know that. Government fund is very limited, and the Modi government is government is very serious that you should procure the you should be, uh, do these things within the ambit of uh, uh, collaboration with the private industry. So we are deprived of the government money every time. Now to update our instrumentation and all that things, we need support from the manufacturer. Sometimes manufacturer says, "Sir, I don't have material to carry out."
elements uh, to the national building code, those are being covered in one of the other, that is one of the 13 parts and uh, sections of 13 parts of the national building code. Largely, our discussion in the national building code is uh, based on the, it's, it's for the building bylaw. This is the extent in the country. We have more than 4,000 plus municipalities, and we have a gigantic task of uh, requesting them to update their building bylaw or those two in line with the National Building Code. Although 2016 was the third revision of the National Building Code, even now some of the states, be it in the Northeast state or in other parts of the country, they are still revising. But most of them have revised across the country as per the information which we are receiving both in the Ministry of Home Affairs as well as the, through the National Disaster Management Authority. So as I mentioned, it is a building bylaw which has to be made up to date with respect to the National Building Code. For any building permit, so there are some special exclusive clearances which may be required from bodies like this, uh, be it airport authority or railways, depending on where the project is going to fall. The code uh, evolves, uh, I mean, it is evolved that all three entities as given on the screen are different. One is the leftmost one is the authority, the middle one is the owner, and the rightmost one is the professional. The code expects that each one of them are a standard or a standalone party who are putting their best efforts towards development, be it construction or demolition of a building or its services. And this uh, information uh, is there in the pamphlet. I request one of uh, our colleagues, I mean, uh, somebody can get into the pamphlet on NBC, maybe later on. I'll skip these things. There are 50 plus uh, list of important changes that are given in the code. Yeah. Coming to today's discussion. Part of the structural safety and fire safety. Health safety is most important relevant to today's discussion. Health safety involves both not only getting enough amount of natural sunlight, but also having the ventilation aspect and more importantly, the acoustic aspect. Of it because it's going to affect the health and well-being of everyone who is using any building or a facility within that building. And finally, the fourth pillar of safety on which the National Building Code and any building code of the world relies on public safety. That means if our project is under construction or demolition, the user or other citizens who are passing through that site should be able to pass through it safely. And this particular construction should not disturb the stability of the adjoining building. Unfortunately, we have seen in the news in the recent times that adjoining building has even tilted or uh, not a flow changed in etc. So these are the list of uh, parts. Uh, this is only for information. And uh, our discussion for today is. <laughs> Section 4 on acoustic sound insulation and noise control. Of course, the author is very much here. I need not say much, but you can see what is the level of touching uh, which has gone into that particular chapter. What is the basic principle of acoustic sound insulation characteristics as well as control? So, as we have been mentioned uh, right from yesterday, noise cannot be avoided. It is going to remain there. But external noise may remain. Internally, a planner or a designer can always do whatever engineering, the best possible engineering or design we can do so that the inborn noise or structural noise within a building can be eliminated or reduced to the extent possible. All this have been mentioned in the code that right from the initial design or conceptualization of a project itself, this thing has to be borne in mind. Not only for uh, fire safety or plumbing, uh, plumbing aspect or lift aspect, etc. Even for the acoustic aspect, the code expects the various uh, the, uh, various professional teams to sit together discuss even before uh, the construction has started. So that aspect is given in part zero of the code. There is an uh, acoustic specialist, sorry, which has been uh, mentioned in the code that they have to be roped in at the right time by the professionals. I mean, by the by the by the design team. And there are certain other uh, professionals which have been listed in bold because those terms have been added in this version of National Building Code that there are certain special buildings and complex buildings which require the intervention by such people. This is a typical way of uh, how building permits are being uh, given. For simple buildings like one or two story houses, uh, an architect or an engineer can give his own signature. It is submitted to the authority and the deal of gold is being given. But if it comes to high risk building or uh, a complex building which is more sorry which is more than 200 i mean 15 meter in height or which has got more than 500 meter square in one floor it is supposed to go through two stage uh, approval process one will be the planning 
uh, a pl planning permit and then followed by the detailed uh, structural permit. So all those are given. This is uh, for the uh, authorities concerned, be it the DDA or a NOIDA or CMDA, for example. What is the power? What is the extent? What are the people they should have? And uh, what is the limitation? And how other pro other uh, uh, professionals who can also appeal? Uh, there is a clause on board of appeal also. It, it, can, it should not be that the authorities have a lopsided uh, requirement or uh, they do their uh, uh, bylaws in a lopsided way. It is giving an option to the professionals also to make an appeal in case they feel it is required. And then even for existing buildings and also for demolition of buildings, what are the powers, what are the uh, powers given to the authorities? Uh, there is a hierarchy of uh, professionals within each and every authority. All those are detailed in uh, part two of the court. We, most of us are aware that unlike uh, uh, the doctors or uh, chartered accountants, currently the Engineer's bill has not yet passed. So currently, the code relies on the submission by each and every professional, including by the owner as well as by the contractor. So, in the last one is not seen that uh, everybody is uh, giving to the authority there. I have planned, I have done my job, either I have structurally designed, or I have contractor, or I have supervised, or I have supplied the material in line with concerned part of the code. So, with that uh, submission, this is uh, submitted to the authority, and based on that, uh, the authorities are giving an NOC order, or they may give the list of checklist to be done, and based on the redesign or reconstructed uh, uh, building or facility, an NOC is being given. And uh, some of, I'll, I'll give some of them. <laughs> Most important to note is on demolition of buildings also. Next week or by this weekend, we are going to be, uh, this is going to happen in NCR region also. People are worried, or if the neighboring property owners are worried. So they are not getting the insurance aspect also for the existing building, but uh, it the code gives a uh, certain provision on how demolition can be can take place in a secure way. And uh, it also talks about existing buildings. If a building is uh, in danger by itself, or if it is going to fall on a adjoining building, then the authority is going to send people to that particular premise, telling them or giving them sufficient notice that number one, you get a way for the building, and then you do repair work in the next three months or three months. Also. If you are not going to do that, you get out of the building and we will take care of it. So such provisions have also been included in the code. Part three of the code, I'll not uh, touch much on this. It talks about <coughs> sorry, the development control rules, which are uh, applicable up to the plot line. And then on the general building requirements, which are uh, required within a building. For example, on the lighting aspect, what are the ventilation aspects, so setback, the front setback, the high setback, etc. It also talks about a newly introduced clock number. 13 on the accessibility features, which is detailed in uh, annexure number B. You can see more than 75 plus pages have been devoted only on the accessibility features, not only for the persons with disabilities or sitting on the wheelchair, but also for people who have got a vision impairment or hearing impairment or single arm uh, disability, etc. There are a variety of more than 18 plus uh, disabilities which are found, uh, which have been reported within the country. And for each one of them, uh, this particular NXP has got detailed provisions. <coughs> I need not uh, mention because those are not relevant to, for the theme of the day. This is for uh, some, uh, this is an example of how uh, inputs of the TCPO has been uh, taken care of based on existing population of a town or a coastal village or village to be developed. It says what is the number of requirement of even healthcare facilities, schools, primary schools, universities, law degree or I mean law colleges or uh, even I have better the college the requirement be based on the current population and future population. A wide idea as to what should be the minimum land area requirements of constructing that. Strangely, somebody might have missed that even for the requirement of boundary walls are given in the code. 1.5 meter is the ideal height given, and if it is a corner plot, it is uh, 700.5 meter, which has been given in the code. But still, we see 2 meter high or 3 meter high or 4 meter high boundary walls which are happening, and uh, there are instances. Particularly during monsoon period like this, where compound walls also are uh, toppling and they are inundated. The people who are either walking or sleeping on the, the footpath. Uh, these are all for information. Some of these will be given in the right as a skip these. But most important, uh, the code is giving requirements for those people who are uh, who have got uh, uh, hearing problems also for them. How a public facility like an airport or a railway station should have. Requirements for them. 
we cannot neglect them from our society. And uh, even that was a good eye opener for GIS that after we introduced the provisions in the National Building Code, we have seen the implementation being happening at various states. And its audits of such particular uh, accessible features are also being carried out by certain agencies based on the audits. It has also found that uh, the ramps of any slope will not work. So not more than one in 12 is a slope for a wheelchair person. And similarly, visual slopes have to be given. We are all uh, able bodied people. In case there is any problem in the hall or say, wherever we are sitting in a case or anywhere, we can see, we can hear that audio sound and then we can get out of the building and hearing this. What happens to people who don't have that hearing facility? So, the board gives that it should also have a visual flow within the room. So, that us people will also see it and then uh, make a conscious call and get out of the building. Similarly, these are some of the uh, various sets of disabilities in the board, and uh, there are features which can be inbuilt in this uh, in any building of which uh, this board is aspiring the designers to uh, do. And uh, especially, uh, it, uh, it requests for uh, parking lots to have dedicated spaces as close as possible to the main building so that such people need not travel a, a longer distance. This is one of the important requirements, uh, which, which is good. I mean, uh, I uh, implement it in the right way in airports and metro stations, which we see, but not so good in uh, some of the uh, some of the walk lanes or violence in uh, the city where we are living. It talks about this PGSI signs, the tactile ground surface indicator, the yellow ones. Uh, we have got this guiding. Uh, Line from warning blocks, etc. And <coughs> auditoria, most important challenges. Uh, so, Sudhi Sab and other experts who are defining people, or those who are joining us uh, online, those must be, uh, those people must be knowing how it is a challenge because you need to have certain materials which have uh, no external noise should come into your theater. And at the same time, the material used should not be a uh, catching fire, for example, because everywhere we have got the heat uh, wires and the heat. Conditioning systems going on. So, round the clock, there is an invariable heating also happening, and uh, there are detectors and everywhere space. And it's a challenge. It also wants the certain special seats to be allocated for a person sitting on wheelchair. Those who have got good eyesight can be sitting in the middle. Those who have got poor eyesight, they have to come to the forward. So, a variety of options have been given in the mm -hmm. report. So, I'm not clear, I'm not uh, covered much of them. Uh, implementation uh, with respect to the accessible features, these are in line with the various established uh, acts and rules in the country. Some of them are listed on uh, this particular uh, device. Fire and life safety, I need not uh, talk much because it evolves around uh, material selection, which is covered under uh, fire prevention. That at the first instance, prevent fire. In case fire happens in a building, you ensure that you have enough amount of uh, staircases, corridors, and uh, guiding trains. So that people exit out through the life safety provision. After the people have gone out of the building, how do you put up the fire? That is through sprinklers or extinguishers or uh, water mist systems or whatever. Those are covered under uh, fire protection. This is class right table number seven of the code. The scope has been clearly mentioned of as to all types of buildings have to be designed for as designed as per part four. But these buildings need an NOC from the fire authority, and that is not a one-time NOC, but uh, maybe five years down the line for residential buildings and three years down the line for other uh, government of three office buildings and public buildings. So that has been given in the report. Some of the annexes have been included new, for example, on exclusive commercial kitchen uh, facilities or car parking structures and metro stations and metro train buildings. This is just for uh, information uh, how uh, it has been defined. Earlier, we have seen some of the concept of a fire tower. Generally, in the hospitals at Ains and in the subdivision, we have seen. Then, in hospitals, we see at the periphery, at the last corridor, you see an exclusive tower, and then it will have both a ramp and then and a separate lift. Today, the code talks about inbuilt firefighting shaft, where you will have both staircase as well as a lift, along with the details of uh, fireman lift, and then uh, ventilator systems, and then top back systems, etc. All these are fed by dual power. Even if the primary power to the facility goes off, that is a second power from a different source, which will ensure that the facilities, uh, in terms of corridors and firefighting shafts, are running all the time. <coughs> there are a variety of occupancies which are given in the code. This is one example which we are I, I saw recently: a tall building which has got a helipad on top and a refuge area at various floors, in line with National Building Code. And uh, part six session eight talks about glass buildings, but I don't know why they have gone for 100% glass buildings in, uh, in 
skill I can start. Anyway, uh, going ahead, this is for immediate consumption of architects. These are the minimum height requirements one has to pass to, one has to ensure, and this is for the fire authorities also. And uh, all the more better, super, 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 example of uh, the Karnataka and other buildings, where the more the height, the more uh, uh, facility, natural way you can ensure that the you know, buildings are uh, performing well. So these are only minimum requirements. The support does not want uh, everybody to uh, go for the minimum requirements. They should go well beyond. This is one of the important introduction we have made that in every staircase, I mean, in every landing of a building, particularly in public buildings where people are new to that building, put uh, the location of uh, various aspects of uh, to which particular floor this uh, staircase is going, whether room actually is there or not. Uh, put some uh, the telephone lines and numbers. For example, there are two malls in the Canada region where uh, these aspects of natural building would have already been covered. Firefly talks about the building materials. On all these building materials like stones or cement or cement matrix products, etc., we have got Indian standard specification. But there are more new materials coming for which there are no standards. That doesn't mean a uh, material, I mean, a uh, professional should not do that. If all these tests are uh, carried out and done by an independent third party laboratory and the owner of the facility, I mean, the professional, the chief engineer of the facility, as he, if he is satisfied with these test results, he can very well go ahead and do such new building, I mean, new material or alternate technologies that are given in part five of the course. And we have operated that ISS certification and uh, in line with what we discussed a uh, few minutes back before our session, <clears throat> even uh, in PS has recognized more than 400 plus laboratories. One of the recent uh, examples was shown to everyone in BIS that is on Hallmark. It is off, uh, it is not relevant. We have our own laboratories. The, su the success rate of the test was 50 percent, but the success rate by the private lab was 92 percent. And uh, now we are going to be very strict with respect to private labs for managing this activity because was the same sample is not passing in our own lab, but it is passing in. Anyway, structural All design, jewelry, jewelry, yes, a gold jewelry. Only 50% passed in BS labs, but it is like two on an average in outside labs. So we are going ahead uh, with some more changes on those. Labs. So the structural design, uh, most of us must be aware or it's not directly relevant. The map, in basic windscreen map has been revised on traditional zone map has been a probabilistic uh, as a map has been recently finalized by the Committee. It will come as an amendment to what I can see. And the construction project management is for the site engineers, particularly, and other professionals to how to carry. Uh, your project well within the available cost, time, and also ensuring the quality, addressing the sustainability aspect with the uh, available material constraints or constraints in terms of transport of materials. So those particular uh, uh, parts will help for the site engineers and there are various safety guidelines also available in the board. So I'll not talk much on this. Out of all these, a uh, new, uh, newly added section uh, on uh, ICT in, in the link. There is a section number four which is relevant to our question for today's uh, discussion. Um, yeah, this is the content of uh, this acoustic chapter. It gives exclusively on uh, uh, the special requirements for residential buildings, uh, hospitals, education buildings, offices, hotels, etc. So, all the more, as I say, Sudhi Sarni Bodata, one can easily read this provision, understand the basic physics or the essential out of it. There are detailed annexes uh, which have been given. Once uh, the designer has understood these principles, then based on the material choices he has got, he can, even the external material may not be always required. I, I, I may not talk much on those uh, uh, subjects, but even uh, yesterday's presentation talked about reverberation time, how many schools did not match to the what was uh, specified in the code, the audit of uh, which was given, given by Mr. Uh, Naresh Ubley yesterday. And, uh, even providing a sufficient distance from a main road or from an highway is going to help uh, reduce the noise and maybe introduction of the green cells or other uh, uh, trees and shrubs will also help in reduction of the noise. How do you design and plan your buildings with respect to outdoor noise? As well? Some of them are listed here. Like maybe maybe a high wall with the uh, mentioned here, and then maybe and some other building, sacrificial building, which is called. We have got a main auditorium. Can we? say 50 meter inside from the main road, but you can have some other building which is not so important, it can come in front of the road as well as your auditorium, so that the noise is not transferred directly to the auditorium, for example, that is an example. Similarly, the requirements for hospital, one need not mention because being a patient who needs to, after operation needs to uh, 
uh, recover well soon needs to have a good amount of light also in that particular room and also a peaceful atmosphere is required. Glass is used as a material to bring in natural light, but uh, it is not so uh, safe in terms of sound. So it needs proper design and detailing of the junctions of that particular window, window and glass junction. Otherwise, sound will automatically come in <coughs> and it will uh, impair the sleep uh, or the recovery time of the case of It also gives various special requirements it has given in the uh, even mentioned in the contents and most important is miscellaneous building, particularly for uh, big theatres, open air theatres, or even auditoria. Because much of them are not being constructed, we can see directly, but uh, we can learn a lot from existing uh, <coughs> auditoria which are in the, in the, in the country already. We have got multiple magic classes, so those are all small theatres. We are not seeing big theatres as such coming up, but maybe there are challenging projects coming up. The top one is of most importance uh, because today we see most of them are either working at home or even there are people who are working in the odd hours, that is in night time. For them, there are special requirements. How a list has to be positioned a little away from the bedroom of uh, that any particular apartment or flat. And uh, how do you design the uh, depth of your roof above the bedroom so that in night you are not disturbed by the floor above? Yeah, maybe in high rises, maybe sir, maybe, uh, maybe post lunch we can have a discussion how these things can be uh, done in detail. And uh, most important is for schools because the kids are being uh, subjected to all, about 15 years, they are being subjected to the same school. For example, what if that school has not got a proper representation? Maybe we have to take a call, take a cue from what uh, was presented yesterday by Mr. Dule also. And then additional information has been given. I need not touch much on this, but uh, it also gives the requirements of regulations you know, which are there in the country. Yesterday we had a chief just from the Delhi uh, State for our Delhi, Delhi Position uh, Committee. And uh, there are other requirements from the National Green Tribunal also on and off. It, it does come, but uh, as rightly mentioned by both uh, the speakers in the morning, that uh, we need to keep our eyes and ears open in terms of proper designing, understanding, and designing itself will can eliminate uh, this particular aspect. Uh, Unnecessary sound in the noise in the building can be eliminated. And then there are certain more uh, specific cases. The most airports in the country have been revamped, and uh, those in the vicinity of the airport, they at times make they may complain. And uh, similarly for uh, uh, for hospitals and schools, particularly because those are uh, where the growing growing people as well as the vulnerable people are located for them things are being given the school. Uh, as mentioned by Suriyar also. So what, we have everything in the code. What uh, ultimately is required is proper implementation. That is what even BAS wants, and not only BAS wants, even our, the government of India is uh, has already signed the Human Sustainable Development Goal as well as the Sendai framework. Both of which are have to be met by the year 2030. For that, we just uh, rolled off not only the government regulatory authorities at the, the municipal level or at the development authority level, it is also the responsibility of the designers and professionals that we do buildings which have to be uh, in line with such sustainable uh, development goals as well as uh, the Sikai framework that in terms of disaster or in terms of performance, not only disaster, even regular day-to-day -day performance goals have to be ensured. That cannot be done without uh, the professionals fixing in their efforts in the right direction. So with that, I would stop here because the rest of the sections in the code are not directly relevant to today's discussion. And uh, we'll be giving you, I mean, the code, the entire code uh, of 2,200 pages is already there for free to download in the VS website. And uh, a brief publication on the pamphlet for those who are yet to see the National Building Code uh, will be distributed shortly during our time. And uh, with that, I thank everyone, uh, particularly Sunita and Dograsa, who are with us for a long time, uh, particularly helping us in the standardization, uh, that they also mentioned, and also other uh, gentlemen and ladies who have been. A suggestion in writing to be a uh, feedback in terms of not only the national building code but also on Indian standards. We have been uh, reviewing uh, at times about the uh, implementation aspect. What is the meaning of this law? So that is helping us to rewrite the uh, provisions in further simplified way. So as mentioned by Dr. Sir, code writing is not everybody's property. We have got some information in mind which has to be translated into simpler form. That is the essence of it. If that has come out in a better way, it will. Uh, uh, help easy implementation. We are uh, working on that particular aspect of avoiding long and complex instances and keeping the text uh, as simple as possible. And uh, maybe those who are quite adept in such uh, such uh, writing, technical writing, they can always be in such areas. Maybe you can always be identified as also. With that, I thank everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you
that i would uh, thank everyone who has joined to online mode as well as in digital mode uh, for patient caring and uh, i thank you lot again sir yes
Now, if you're not providing the accessible thing, so how will you provide in that space? Ultimately, the land on which you're building here was the cost of the land was borne by all the residents. Yes, everybody is born it, mind you. So the top group cannot hijack that land only for their purpose. The more the first floor, the second floor, if they want to have a lift, they can't have another lift. There's only one mm -hmm. place for one lift. Therefore, when, when a lift is installed in neighborhoods, it has to be so designed that in supposing today you don't need it, but you may need it tomorrow. So it must be designed in such a manner that future things they want to add, they should be able to add at a cost. As a, as a partial capital cost or the maintenance cost or whatever. So some <laughs> such of arrangement has been worked out. But it goes without saying that you need structural engineers to see because the standalone structure. Some are making seeds, some are making accuracy. You need a lift man also. A lift certificate is also needed, like a connection needed, all the basic things are required. Come on, good question.
Then uh, some insulation of chlorophyll filling impacting the airborne and then the method of selecting is also provided. And then uh, conversion values, uh, these are given by uh, form of an excel. The conversion values of materials and types of construction are values of uh, windows and closed. And then we have the next uh, IS2526 that is for uh, acoustical design of polytodons and concrete floors. So, uh, the main requirements uh, are given for how policy is for speech or drama, policy is for music or both speech and music, uh, cinema hall and open air auditorium and concrete floors. And uh, the factors that are uh, on which the uh, the method uh, and again are this correct reverberation time in this hall to reduce echo and the absence of echo correct uh, loudness as well as that all of these impact all and uh, low reverb on uh, auditoriums or uh, concerts or cinema better yeah. I think that concept is not there in our thing. Privacy is not a Concept related on the chat. Yes, this transition is not considered. Because I think when we consider that all the software to perfect. And here, uh, the general instance of the one of the site of the location of all the sign and shape of all the support, the position of Stage, we have one side one, we can see one floor, balcony, etc. The arrangement of shape, and the uh, design of all for reservation time, the use of sound absorbing material, uh, sound absorbing system. Uh, the standard also is an additional requirement for open air and permanent functioning code. Then uh, next year, IS 3483 for noise structure industrial review. In industrial buildings, we have different noise uh, sources that like impact our sounds, different sounds, transportation, air turbulence, and the sound uh, of running of machines. So, uh, the standard also provides uh, the spectral distribution of noise and methods to like optimum noise reducing device on the basis of this optimal noise level. Then, there are uh, uh, the sound uh, pressure levels. Uh, with respect to the noise levels measured as operator positions are given in the code for different types of uh, operation and tooling for development for drop pole general, for weaving, spinning, uh, for sliding, blowing, for grinder and hydrogen machine, etc. Then uh, the standard is risk criteria on the basis of damage to health and interference in communication. And we uh, provide measures of noise uh, reduction by following the method. Design application we have uh, by analysis of source, analysis by included and barriers, use of acoustic absorption devices in clinical and psychology, use of sound absorbers in their machine. Again, on the health practice, uh, and which uh, again, yesterday, someone raised the point. Your total exposure level is very, very important. Where is this? So the ISO and ISO standards. 80 dB or 85 dB for 8 hours. So, noise goes mandatory dB. It is not in total, not just in total noise level, but your noise goes. No, so that is existed only for the industrial noise. That is as per the OSHA regulation. That is yeah, 90 dB for 8 hours. But that is not for the residential. That is only for the industrial exposure. Operation. Yeah, yeah that, that is. Operation. Yeah, exclusively mentioned only for the industry. Then uh, the second also is range of uh logic for various locations and the uh, recommendations of uh noise equipment in town form. This includes uh uh the various sources of noise and the noise level, including a uh, three source. Private seashore and botanical And then, general level consideration for layout and location plan of various zones for this additional plan. Um, there are uh, various zones are classified 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ladies and Gentlemen Mike Business uh, Morning Planning and Location of Various Types of Business Then, uh, standing this up at table for acceptable outdoor and uh, for residential area and acceptable indoor and for various types of business. Uh, these acceptable measurements are given here uh, for outdoor measurements and for uh, indoor measurements. For uh, the middle area, so let me get into the for the for Yeah, I'm 
sound is a part of vibration. So vibration is high density of the sound. How to start the cutting the people life and even the uh, living life is coming from here. So what is the clause? Can we add this particular point? One is the foundation isolation which has to be done. So that structurally it is not subjected to cutting due to the risk of crime. And number two is what happens to those in those higher floors in the building. The rules will be subjected to day in day movement of the train. That is really a problem. Money we will remember that this is only going to be right away. Ah, hmm. uh, yeah, on track. Track is the right away. Yes. So there you have to build it. Yeah. The rail is so far away. That's the difference. Part section for me. Seventy meters. Like fifty to seventy meters, you have to build it. Should be ideally five to one hundred meters. More like one to five hundred meters. Five meters. Yes. 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 Yes.
and uh, around uh, we uh, captured data for around 100 locations and found that the levels were really alarming in the so but uh, when it comes to european region they are thinking about living well within the limits of our planet this is their action program 2020 and now they are extending it to next three years and they have given these special limits unfortunately these limits i think it these are not we are not able in a situation to realize these limits obviously but maybe next five or 10 years plan. and uh, now the government uh, there is a serious uh, awareness about this thing in the noise yeah. making has come into the part particularly i think most of the people who are associated with pollution control boards they know that now standards are being coming up for the various cities about noise mapping so basically noise mapping is just a graphical representation of the noise levels of a particular area but uh, this is just a noise map for a npl where you are currently here when it comes to control methods so you know that already there are two methods active and passive but we are basically one passive method rather than active method. this is just a cost effective analysis where we have tried to analyze what are the various uh, factors which can help to control control the noise pollution and we find building design is a cost good cost effective method 2 to 15 db reduction can be there and cost issues can be also compromised to a bit extent building insulation is an, in, another important issue for a few times we and it is just uh, it be score uh, cost effective score so this is being uh, represented by this so what is the role of npl i think most of the people are not still clear about the role of npl npl is a national meteorology institute of the country you must have seen this pyramid Uh, in front of our dietary bungalow so this is the national uh, traceability chain the traceability means that the apex level is the nmi the national meteorology institute of the country by the act of the parliament all the measurements related to the sound and vibration those are traceable to the uh, to npl so basically these are the national primary standard these are i think you must be using the microphone but those are the measurement microphones that you are using but these are the reference standard microphones from which these measurement microphones are being used so this is a uh, this is a responsibility that that is restored to the cfn npl for maintaining the standards of sound and vibration and we are doing that thing and this is how the traceability chain is going on these are the reference standards from which you are calibrating the, these working standards that you are using for your day to day activities and all the traceability is to these reference standards throughout the country so this is a big role that npl is being given and uh, we this is the traceability chain Ultimately, the end user is the all the pollution control board, which is the whatever uh, <coughs> measurements are being done. Those are traced back to the national standard we like by CSR. Some status as far as international scenario is concerned. So you can see this is the status as on the we actually participated in the international meeting in uh, last year in November 2021, where all the Asia Pacific NMI participated, and you can see our role is very pretty well. we have 34 cmts in the bhp website and you can see that we are at uh, i think three or fourth number you can see china chinese sepai and and uh, republic of korea they are having more than cmts than us so getting number of cmts itself is a big recognition to any country and in fact uh, you will appreciate that getting the cmts means that you are at par with other countries in whatever measurements you are So we have been into various uh, committees and about policy making, etc. Noise mapping, etc. Then studies by Supreme uh, for Supreme Court. Then uh, noise mapping for the recent projects for Punjab Pollution Control Board, Delhi Government for Construction Noise Limit, etc. Noise Pollution Control Committee by Delhi Government. This was one of the study that we did for Delhi Metro when Delhi Metro was at the starting in 2006. That was impact which Delhi Metro has. on the uh, nearby locations so this study we did in 2006 then commonwealth games village uh, project also we handled and one thing that uh, sulita discussed about the runway the noise barrier for international indira gandhi airport this was done with in collaboration with iit delhi so we are also taking uh, doing the type approval testing for dg sets i think we must be knowing about that and uh, fire practice pressure testing also and in a quick chamber that thing about machine noise uh, diagnostic and evaluation so uh, we are planning that we, we have uh, 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 this is actually a, a plan that all these things should come under the under the regulations particularly the noise leveling of the 
So we propose that, like the Bureau of Indian Strength, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, you are having a rating. So they, this rating should be there in the appliances also, particularly used in indoor appliances. So this is the, another the reverberation chamber testing that we are talking about. And basically, as you know, bottom three study is there very well here. The drywall technology is now the major issue. And I think it can surpass the conventional concrete or masonry grid constructions. And by proper use and proper design of these things, we can even uh, outperform the uh, masonry construction. And this is just an example of type of window glazing that we have uh, built up with a, uh, in a collaborative project with National Building System Purgaon. And there we could develop very some of the good uh, glazing, which can be very helpful for areas where traffic noise is done. So this, this is our actually plan. If manufacturers are supporting us, we can share our design, our thought, and we can really build some good products which can be very useful for the market. And now coming to the uh, concept of national building code. So now this is actually the European concept of acoustic classification scheme that is coming to picture. Where most of the European nations, they are classifying into A, B, C, D, E, F on the level of acoustic comfort. So C, they are telling us in the normal and A and B are for the enhanced acoustic insulation. So maybe we have to also focus in this uh, criteria in our national building codes if we can, so that we can exclusively identify that what, what should be the limits for getting the enhanced acoustic comfort. And these are some of the limits that, that have been prescribed in this uh, uh, airborne sound insulation and impact sound insulation. Unfortunately, Rasmussen, Dr. Rasmussen and Machin Marana, she was there in, uh, uh, there is a conference organized in uh, Rasmussen, Scotland, internal, but I requested Dr. Rasmussen to present here to give a lecture, but somehow it, should not, it was not able to, she was not able to present that. So she is the person who is working on these standards and she has built up these standards that what should be the various standards for the various parts. And I think we can implement these things in our codes also so that we can... Currently, all our residential construction is part of. Yeah, most of the things are... all classes. Yeah. Impact and AMO. Yeah. Uh, basically, it, uh, this concept is not very well... In... They don't bother the yeah. just saying. Yeah. It is totally ignored because it is not considered important. They say, like, right way. But we need yeah, to do it properly. Unfortunately, you know, like thermal insulation or thermal comfort, to get proper comfort, you need to spend the correct money on the right thing. To do cheap work, you can get cheap work. I think, but we should have also know the targets also, na? because people are not doing some. I think uh, I have. Uh, in, Last three four years, I've been getting requests from manufacturers that FCC कितनी होनी चाहिए, sir RWCCT और क्या होता है? तो जब लोगों को clear ही नहीं है, manufacturer को ही नहीं clear है जो बता रहा है। तो but और national building court में नहीं, national building court में RW की value सिर्फ एक prescribed है, but manufacturer doesn't know what about the acoustic comfort. That is basically इतना होना चाहिए। अगर आज की generation I think they are ready to spend money on this particular but uh, Europe has implemented then why why can't we the same the same thing what should be the RW yeah and if the RW is this it is bad it is this it is yeah that you have to select where you that want that perception to be. I think we, we have to uh, maybe exactly the same thing yeah we have uh, have to bring the awareness towards so this is uh, again another important example where uh, this is just an Australian guideline where they are having a star rating and there they are using this term with CPR the traffic noise so basically these things can be guidelines for Indian scenario also. We can, this is again the lead rating by US Green Building Council. They are still sticking to the specification. Dr. Gurg, in India, implementation and enforcement is issue. Yeah, definitely, sir. That's why I am... write any guidelines, not happening. I am just coming to one of the slides where I think uh, maybe and speech privacy is, I think, altogether missing in our scenario. Maybe we have to find out this concept of ABCD or the balance of social design. To absorb, block, cover, and diffuse, so as to uh, achieve the target. Now, this thing is actually, uh, this has been published in one of the topmost journal in our field where I just tried to envisage that there could be two criteria prescriptive and verification. Of course, verification criteria, D and T, W, this is not possible in India. But prescriptive criteria, as in there in the building course, can be there, and the building manufacturers may adopt to these criteria so that we can achieve at least some results. Because D and TW testing, like we uh, saw the in the 
like uh, in the presentation of Dr. Thomas, I think that is not very feasible in our country. So maybe if we can focus on this descriptive, descriptive criteria, so maybe we can somehow we can achieve that. So this is actually, uh, I think we have uh, published a compendium and this is basically the holistic approach where we propose that there should be policy development guidelines for practice noise management and control in buildings, regulations for structure bone noise, airborne sound absorption, airborne sound insulation, guidelines for speech privacy, intelligibility, sound distribution, awareness, knowledge, it should, it is a mandatory part and yesterday some people have come up with this, that there should be some training certification process by NPS particularly on this topic, and we will definitely plan this. Then, Structural noise, the top six items are irrelevant. We need many more items. Only the last one is relevant. Uh, pardon for, uh, basically, because, you, uh, because in the building board, this is rating NC rating. I think NCB rating and all these things are... Noise, you know, to have more items, one, two, three, four, five, six, are not relevant for structural noise. Maybe yeah, we can include those things, we yeah, can we deliberate on yeah. yeah. that we can deliberate, I think, that uh, how this can be improved, uh, how what things we, we have forgotten that should be improved. And I think there should be some general guidelines because their harmonization is uh, very important. One country is having different building boards, other countries having different then yeah, implementing the use of spectrum adaptation terms. I think no manufacturer is currently getting these types of testing. They are just uh, there is just a Thinking STC values are our care, NRC value care. Uske ilawa aur koi soch nahi nahi chata kuch nahi. We have to publish uh, our data. Yeah. Thirty versus ten. Yeah. So that thing I think should should be come now in, into the picture. Then DG set ki uh, guidelines hone chahiye canopy ki machine noise enclosures. These documents should be there as such suggested that these guidelines should be there so that people can. Uh, study that and they can accordingly develop their own. And just to add, sir, we have added some of the new testing activities where we think that we can help the industry. Noise barrier certification facility for the sound insulation and software. I think I discussed last, uh, yesterday also, uh, barriers are still there, but still they are not meeting the challenge. Acoustic point, point they are meeting the challenge, maybe aesthetically or other constitutions may be there. We have also started sound insulation to testing of acoustical material. Reverberation chamber may RWCC, basic sound absorption car, hanging vapor testing, auditorium sheets, etc. And some of the assignments are already there with us, particularly from the central risk of the testing, results are actually not valid. Yeah, 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 you are very... People misuse that. If you don't see testing is important, get other values of the material. If you're going to do detailed analysis of Behavior in the cavity, behavior, thermal behavior, reverberation issues in, in those cases, you understand the Yeah, definitely, sir. People say that after the first time, we can do that in the next few days. Impedance to generally, we can discuss all the things. Because if you have PhD, you can do it. I think, you should do it. You can do it properly. So we should not test it for sound absorption. It is just a, it's just a testing activity. We always recommend people to have a reverberation chamber yeah, testing. There is, there is a yeah, definitely there is a huge difference in accuracy issues are there. In fact, sound if it is due to other we uh, quantify the uncertainty, it is more than 10%. And for a reverberation chamber... It doesn't give the correct values for, yeah, definitely. for reverberation. So, but a reverberation chamber is, I think, more recommended and uh, we request all the people. But at the same point of time, it requires a sample of 10 to 12. So sometimes manufacturers say, it's a regional sample site, many in the doctor. So anyhow, well, what's the standard test when you do a test in the like, uh, NRP or any value? So what's the standard test? Standard test, 10 to 12 meters. Just how the petition is going to be. Standard test, standard test. Standard test, standard test. That is more authentic. Yeah, that is more authentic. In PDS, you have just take a preliminary design. Yeah. That is more authentic. That is more authentic. That is more authentic. That is more authentic. But this is again the certified testing. So that can be missed by any manufacturer. Yeah. Yeah. They can do that data, they can see what that can be small. Yeah. 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 Yeah
getting into this business, yeah. making the reverberation chamber, testing, training, and all these things, I think, very cumbersome process. And that's why people are much more reluctant. And maybe you can leave us the job to NPL itself. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we can give them a rough idea. Yeah, that is uh, just a rough idea. Maybe you, uh, at least 5 to 10 percent difference will be there. With the reverberation chamber, now you can see logically a small sample and a 10 meters sample is different to the sample. So, I just can, and maybe if you can see your interest, this is one of the recent books that has been published by Springer. You can go through all these things I have mentioned specifically in that. So, thank you again, and I'll be glad if you can just one or two questions because we are all. Yes, sir. What are the conversations that are Sir, we are only focused about residential because the industry we think that they must be taking some precautionary measures for some insulation. Yeah, but I think they must be using some enclosures or some something. If not, sir, then then these guidelines should contain these things up. I think this sets a very important. Sure. So maybe I uh, thank you again and now I request you all to please proceed for lunch because we are already late. The next session is to be started at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you,